City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I could pick some skin and put the horses in to the barn. And time to move them out again. Red parts, green pastures, beautiful white houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello and welcome back. So we're going to start another project today and it is going to be a Nancy Zeman pattern. I know Nancy Zeman passed on several years ago but they are still making her pattern so that's fun sewing with nancy is always a cult classic with my generation um i'm not sure which of you i'm doing the reason is a while back i made a dress out of this really cool stretch uh rust colored stretch velvet cool dress love that um it's on at my mom's house and I have enough left over that I'm pretty sure I can make this version, which is shorter sleeves, shorter, more like a tunic top. If I actually have enough, and it's in a, my, my fabric is in kind of a wonky shape, you know, when you cut things out of it, so I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work. Plus, because it is a napped fabric, I need to be really careful that when I'm laying things out, I'm all laying them the same direction, which can be troublesome when you're trying to, you know, make things fit. So I'm not sure. I would like to make this dress, which is basically this, but with slightly longer sleeves and a slightly longer skirt. We will see. It should be pretty easy to put together. It looks like the, the bodice and sleeves are all one piece, the bottom is a piece, and there's some pockets. Um, I'm not gonna do the cow neck one, I just don't feel that right now. So let me get started getting this cut out, see what's going to fit on my big scrap of crushed, or not crushed, stretch velvet fabric here, and we will get started. Okay, uh, first thing I have noticed cutting this out this is my bodice front, and if I line up this front fold on my grid line here, you can see that it's lower and then it comes up, which is good because if this is where, you know, your apex is for your whole chest, that's gonna wanna puff this up a little bit more to make it even at this point. But here's the thing. Um, this has quite a high little elastic. It's way higher than waist level. It's almost like empire, but not quite. It looks a little bit lower. But because my bust is lower in general than the standard pattern sizes, you know, because of gravity, um, I am going to have to extend this. And I have decided, because this is the back here too, even though the back might be okay, I think that what's gonna work for me is just extending both the front and the back piece by the same amount. And I think that that's gonna make it a lot more comfortable. Because right now, say, that's where they are marking their apex. Mine is closer to this point. And these are usually made for around a big B cup, and I have a D cup. So by the time all that is done, where the elastic is here, it's not even going to be, it's going to end up cutting off right here. And that is no fun for anybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two inches up here. Okay, so before I get any of my fabric cut out, I'm going to do that. So just to show you what I do on the front, I'm going to do on the back too because the pieces are very similar. I'm just lining up this fold line here on my grid. I think you're a little crooked there. That might help. 
And then somewhere in this area, probably about a half inch below the notch where it's starting to straighten out a bit, I'm just going to draw a line straight across here. And that is where I'm going to slice this open. So. Okay. So with that done, I need to get a scrap piece of tissue paper. Okay, so I'm just going to slide my little scrap in here and tape the top piece to it in a few spots. That looks pretty good. I want to make sure this is still on the straight here. And then I'm going to come down and I can see through here where there's two inches. So here's the line where I'm going to add my bottom. So I'm going to add it right here, making sure my cut line is going along this line. My fold line is continuing down right here. And I put a couple pieces of tape. This is just going to make me feel a lot more comfortable, you know. Um, I've just done too many things where it ends up being like extreme empire and that's just not really comfortable on me. So what I have done here, I am going to do to the back piece also and then that way they will still match up um, when I'm sewing my side seams. Okay, so I wanted to show you because I think I skipped it on the front once I have it so that my pieces are all uh, taped on. Then I can just come back and along the cutting line just trim it so everything is nice and even. Okay, so over here also I'm just going to blend those two together and now I have a new and improved front and back piece. Okay, so now looking at this little piece here, this piece is the skirt front and back. Okay, it's cut on a fold but you use the same for the front and the back. So up here it has the finished waist measurements. Well, I say finished, but it's before elastic. So I can see that for my size, 16, it has the waistline at 48 inches, which is plenty big enough for me to pull over my head, okay? Down here at this lower bullseye is the hip measurements. And I can see for my size, it's 54 and a half inches. So that's fine. You know, this is not in any way going to be a very full skirt on me. She does not have the hips that I have. It's just life and that's okay. Um, it's not going to be skin tight though. I mean, I, I don't feel comfortable wearing those bodycon kind of outfits where it's just hugging your every little curve because my curves don't need to be seen like that. So I think that that's a sufficient amount of ease to make it comfortable for me. I have cut this at the shorter version. Um, when I'm actually laying it out on my fabric, if I see that I can extend it a few inches, you know, I will. I'll just continue these lines straight down until I get to a point where I can cut two of these on a fold to the same length. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my fabric kind of put out here and see what I can do. Okay, I was able to add about two and a half inches to the bottom length of that shorter version. So, um, mine's going to be just slightly shorter, I mean slightly longer than this, but I did add two inches here. So, in all, I'm adding four inches to this one. Plus, that's, you know, a fashion model, but at the same time, my legs are a whole lot shorter than hers, so, you know, it might end up being a little bit above my knee. You never know. We never know. This stuff is kind of a pain to cut out, but I got it. Um, I ended up having to use a layout totally different than what, you know, is traditionally done. So instead of here, laying my pieces out with lengthwise because my fabric was such a weird, a weird shape, but it is a four-way stretch. It stretches all directions. Um, I actually used, turned it 90 degrees and put the sel one of the selvages as the up position. So I had to try to make sure that all four of these pieces were turned, you know, 90 degrees so that one selvage was up. But it was really weird, you know, lots of funky little angles. 
I'm hoping I did it right, you know. If I didn't, oh well. This is a piece for binding for around the neck edge and um, it says to use it on the grain line going that way. Again, I'm using a four-way stretch and this is my piece. I have this scrap. So whatever way I can fit this on here, that's the way it's gonna be. And I can stretch it just about any direction. So that should be okay. Okay, so with everything cut out, I have one of my bodice pieces here over on my ironing board. And sh what she's gonna have you do is put a stretch stay tape on, and I love that. So this is my Trico. Uh, it's fusible on one side, it's a Trico tape and it does have some stretch to it, okay? Uh, I have it in white, an inch wide, and I also have a brand new roll here in black that I think would work a little bit better uh, if I can figure out how to undo this here. So this is going to get fused up here around the neckline, working sort of like a stay tape. So kudos to her for including this. Let me go ahead and get the pattern off here and open it up and we're gonna fuse it, of course, to the wrong side of the fabric. Now, I just looked and she only wants this tape to be about a half inch wide. So I am just going to cut off a piece. Oh, that's approximately the right length. We'll call right around here good and cut that down the middle and that should give me what I need. This is going to get fused along the edge so it should be inside of the seam allowance. Um, it shouldn't be in the visible part of the fabric and so let's see I'm just going to put one of those over a side and place this so it is at the edge. Actually I'm going to start over here on this side and fuse it on. I'm not going to be stretching it. I'm just kind of wrapping it. If it has a little fold in it, that's okay for me. Um, okay, so I've got that fused on. I'm just going to clip the little edge up here. And like I said, this is my back. I need to do the exact same thing to the front bodice, just around the neckline on the wrong side, okay? Now on the right side, there it is. You don't see it. I think that's lovely. Um, that's just to reinforce this so that your neckline does not get stretched out of shape. All right, so now that this is fused onto both the front and the back, I'm gonna sew the top of the shoulder, which is the top of the sleeve all the way down, just matching it up. And if you noticed, I did not spend any time clipping notches or drawing circles or anything like that. First of all, this fabric is a pain in the neck. It wants to move everywhere. So I think the sooner I can contain it, the better. Um, but also because of the way that this is designed, I don't think that it's going to be that critical. Um, and I keep my pattern pieces handy on the table over there so that I can go back and reference it if I need to. Okay, so I'm just going to put many, many pins here. Once I get it stitched, I'm going to sew this at 5 8 7 inch. Now I want to show you something. Um, I know it doesn't match, okay, but I'm using a straight stitch machine and this is a thread that has some stretch built into it. Um, I believe, I believe, I believe, yes. I have this in black and I have it in white. I'm just going to use the black because I think it'll hide in the shadows more. But I'm going to put one of these in my bobbins, one of these in my needle, and I think that combination, it's going to have enough give um, that it's not going to want to pop or anything like that. So when I do go to sew it, I will show you the way that I do it. I do incorporate just a tiny bit of stretch in it, but not very much because I don't want it to get misshapen. So let me finish pinning these along the top of uh, both sides. Okay, once again, I am going to be over here on Rosie today. She's just a straight stitch machine from 1945. 
She's strong, but nothing fancy. So you can do this on a straight stitch machine. You know, it's nice if you do have a machine that has a stretch stitch built into it, but there are always ways around it. So let me get in a little bit closer and show you how I'm gonna hold my fabric. So like I said, I am using that Guterman somewhat stretch um, thread. Okay, I do not see a name on it on the spool, unfortunately. I got it off the waywalk.com website, so, you know, it's, they do have it there. I can't give you the link or anything like that because I don't, I don't remember, but go to waywalk.com. Anyhow, as I'm sewing, I just did a little back thing to, you know, lock it in. I'm going to just put a little bit of pressure on it here. You see, I'm not like yanking it super hard, but just a little bit to hold it taut. And once, okay, now that there's enough fabric in the back here that I can grab from the back, I'm going to be pulling it from both sides. Okay, now... If, even if you don't have that type of thread and you're just using a regular all-purpose thread, this still works. So this is just a straight stitch. I'm going to do that all the way down to the end, just pulling it slightly tight from the back, you know, not trying to jerk it. Because if you jerk it too much, it, you might break your needle, you might get things all out of whack. It's just enough to hold the fabric tight, but then you're moving along with it, okay? if you see that so I'm not like keeping my hands straight I'm just kind of like getting it in a good position then moving it up anyway let me go ahead and finish this and then we'll press it open over here at my ironing board the first thing I'm going to do is press my seam flat okay if you've done a little bit of stretching or something as you sew there's a chance that your seam may look a little bit you know, wobbly, red lettuce looking. So that should set it in so, <clears throat> so that everything will behave, okay? Once that is done, I'm gonna come back and press this open. And I'm gonna do that because I've worked with this knit before and I know that it's gonna behave itself. If you're using a really lightweight knit that is not going to behave itself and wants to curl up and it's just a pain in the neck, what you can do is trim off about half of your seam allowance. So it's only about a quarter inch deep and then just press it over to one side. Okay. But for me, for this fabric, pressing it open is going to be a better option. And you can always surge your seam allowance, you know, you do you. This is just the way I am working on this today. Okay. So now that that is pressed open, that's really good. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. And this fabric does have this nap and it does react weird when I iron it so that when I'm all done, I'm gonna have to iron it again because you can kind of see a little hint of a cloud right there. Um, every time any piece of the little hairs that create this velvet get ironed, they, they do that. Um, but what I found last time is that if I can just ignore it while I'm making it, when I come back at the very end and give it a nice touch, um, I can get it to even out, okay? So anyhow, I'm just going over it one more time. I'm not pressing down really hard. I'm actually barely skimming the surface here just because I want, I want this side to be nice, okay? So here is my seam. The way I did this is the way I'm pretty much going to do all of my... Um, seams here but what I want you to see is this is the top shoulder okay so this piece the fabrics at the top this piece the fabrics at the top but when you look at it this way they look like two completely different colors of fabric there you know it's pretty dramatic um, that's why you want to make sure that when you're cutting out pieces of a napped fabric like corduroy or velveteen or whatever this is you know you always have the upside being the same for all of your pieces, you know, or else it'll look totally different while you're wearing it. So anyhow, let me go ahead and I'm just going to pump this up onto my dress form because I need to start working on the little neck band, that really long strip. Okay, so this is my neck facing and 
as I take my paper off, there's a few things I'm going to mark. First, I did not put my notches on my neckband, so I'm going to ignore that. But this center line here is the center front. So I am going to mark that with a line here and put CF for center front. This is a heat erasable pen. It'll come off. Next, over here where there's this diamond, that is where the shoulder seam is going to go. So I'm going to find the diamond for my size and right around that point put a line. The very back seam is going to be, you know, where I sew this together. So I don't really have to mark that. But just keeping these three lines on there is going to help me as I go to match it up so everything will be proportionally the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this right sides together. Come on, Marie. see how it wants to twist? Anyhow, I'm going to fold this right sides together, take these two end pieces here, stitch them at 5 8 7 inch, and then press those seam allowances open. Okay, so I've got sewed together in one big circle here. I need to fold it right sides together. I was not thinking I was going to do that. So basically all of my little marks that I just made are going to disappear. So I'm going to need to put those back um, on the outside here. <sighs> Where am I? Here's one. Okay, so here's a mark on the inside here. I just need to transfer that to the outside. I'm just going to put a little mark like that on the outside so I can see it and so forth and so on all the way around. All right this stuff is driving me nuts because it does not want to behave. So what I'm going to do next is definitely not in their instructions but instead of trying to hold this together with pins I am going to put a little bit of stitch witchery on the inside and fold it in half. So starting over here, I'm just going to rip, you know, I got my fusible bond kind of stuff here. Rip off a piece about four inches wide, stick it on the edge, fold it in half, and give her a little heat and steam. Okay. That's going to be good. So then I can come back. And yes, I know that is going to erase my marks. I will deal with it. I've got my paper right there. So it won't be that bad to go ahead and put it together again. So the same thing here on the other side. Put a little piece. Fold it in half. Give it some heat. And then I'll do the halfway point on both sides. Just because with this this fabric and that many pins and everything wanting to go its own way it's it would just be a nightmare so let me just do some on this side some on this side and we'll be set okay so now it's going to stay i think this is a lot better for me um, i know this is my center back i know straight across from that is my center front i'm just going to go ahead Throw my scissors on the floor. Oh my goodness, that was bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a pin over here at the center front and then just grab my little piece of paper and from that center front I can measure up, say, okay, this point here is where my shoulder seam is. I'm going to stick a pin back in here and the same over here and that spot right about there. I'm not going to get too fanatical about it because it is a stretch. Okay. All right. So now that this is a lot easier to deal with, I'm going to go ahead and get my fabric. The one with the lower neckline is the front. So this is the front. This one is the back here. And I need to mark where the centers of the front and back are. So I'm just going to fold it in half. And once again, stick a pin in the center back. And come on. And right here is the center front. Okay. So now I can open it up. I've got my four points that I need to match up. So I'm going to start 
in the back. Here's a raw edge, here's the folded edge. Putting the raw edge of my band against the raw edge of my fabric, okay? Um, you know what? I'm gonna get some clips because I think that would be easier right here. All right, so I'm just gonna clip this back, then come over here to this shoulder, line up this pin with the shoulder seam, and I'm gonna clip it making sure that these seam allowances are staying open. And I have that flipped. All right, there we go. Okay, so then coming back down to the bottom here, making sure I have not flipped it around. I have my raw edges here. I can line up with my center bottom, or I should say my center front. Get this clipped in place. And the last one is over here at this shoulder, again, making sure that my shoulder seam allowances are staying open. Okay, and now all we're gonna do is stretch a little bit and make it fit, all right? We are gonna be stitching these at 5 eighths of an inch, which is gonna come up about halfway up this band. That's the plan. So let me get it pinned on here and then I'm gonna run it through stitching 5 eighths from this edge all the way around. I just wanted to show you, I just opened my neckline so I can kind of rotate the entire thing around here. And let's see, where am I? Here I am. And just try to make sure that these cut edges are lined up the cut edge is gonna be a lot bigger on the band than on the neckline, but at the 5 8 inch point right over here, it should fit pretty well. Okay, so I can just kind of work myself around here a little bit at a time. And I find if I hold both sides of it, oops, just threw another thing on the floor. I'm just throwing everything on the floor tonight. Um, it works better if I can pull from both sides. <coughs> All right, here we go. around. If you are going along and you see a big lump of fabric, if you can get something small and pointy and work it in that way, that's a, a good option like this. Okay, that might keep it from wanting to bunch up on you because you can see there's a lot more fabric over here. And just take it slow. It's not a rush. It's not a race. Um, let me pull this out to make sure that these raw edges are the same. And then I'm aiming for where I started. I'm going to overlap it a little bit and back it up. There we go. The next thing we're going to have to do, pull this out of here, is trim this almost the entire seam allowance out. I'm gonna need to come back and just leave a fat eighth of an inch on here. Okay, the folded side you're leaving alone, but I'm gonna come in here and trim most of this seam allowance off. Okay, so I have it trimmed off and I am going to be folding this band towards the inside like this. And that's how it's going to finish off that seam all the way around. In the instructions, what they want you to do is machine stitch it, edge stitch it along the side here, and that's going to give you a look of kind of like a top stitched look on the outside, which is fine. Um, but just because of this particular fabric and the way that 
it works and the way I want it to look. Instead of doing that, I'm actually going to come in here with just a needle and thread and just kind of try to invisibly whip stitch it so that it's going to lay flat. But before I do that, I'm going to press it. So I'm going to go over to my ironing board, get it turned under, and I want it to turn like beyond where the stitching line here is. Here's the stitching line and I am turning it beyond that so that it's a little bit on the inside of my garment so that on the outside of my garment I don't see any of that, okay? So I'm gonna press it and then I'm gonna come back and just whip stitch this by hand. Okay, so welcome to the next morning. And I wanted to show you, I only got like maybe about five inches of this whip stitch down last night. Starting to bother me, I had to walk away. What I'm doing this morning is before I finish stitching this, I'm gonna stick some little stitch witchery again, my favorite tool when I'm using knits. And I'm just gonna tuck some in there, fold it down where it needs to be. And if my iron is heated up enough, come in here and fuse it on. <clears throat> my problem of what was really bothering me is that it was stretching where I didn't want it to stretch and not stretching where I wanted it to so that I was ending up with a little bit of a tug. You know, nothing terrible, nothing that nobody outside of me would notice, but it was enough that it wasn't as clean as I wanted it to be. So what I'm hoping is that if I can press it with this kind of stretched a little bit, that that'll lay nice. And what I'm talking about is here's my little knit stitch, my little whip stitches there. You know, it's not bad at all. I think that fusing this little folded edge down in place is at least gonna make it easier for me while I'm working my way around with a needle and thread. So give me a few minutes. I'm gonna finish pressing my little stitch witchery down. And you can see it's holding it flatter here so that that way, you know, I can come and whip stitch it and it'll be behaving itself. Okay, I will be back shortly. Okay, so I'm over here doing my thing and um, I wanted to point out a couple little things because I don't know that I've talked about whip stitching and hand sewing in a bit. I'm just starting a new thread here. What I'm doing is I'm coming down here and just picking up like maybe one thread in my fabric, okay? And then coming back up through the little band. And I'm making my stitches like a fat eighth of an inch apart. <clears throat> I'm making my stitches like a fat eighth of an inch apart, but that's plenty. If you want yours farther apart, you can do that, you know? As long as you're consistent, I don't know that it really matters, you know, you just need to make your stitches close enough that it's not going to buckle on you. So um, when you're hand sewing, I don't have any wax or soap or anything on this thread right now. It's just a regular thread. But one thing that can help your thread not tangle as much, <coughs> if you're pulling it off a spool of thread that looks like this, just a regularly flat wound spool. It doesn't have crisscrosses or anything on it. Um, when you pull it off, the end that you're pulling from, that's what it's gonna lead. So thread your needle onto this side, tie the knot down here so that you're going this direction and it's gonna go a lot better through your fabric. If you put your needle here and you pull it this direction, because of the, the direction that the thread's twisted, it's just gonna tangle up a lot faster. Just thought I would throw that out there. Um, a way to make sure you always do that is to thread your needle before you cut it off, you know? But you do you, it's just a helpful hint. And if you don't get it right, that's okay too. Your thread's just gonna be a little bit more prone to tangling. And um, also on this little piece down here, while I was pressing it, when I got around where my seams are, because it's so much thicker, I actually brought it in quite a bit further and I'm gonna be stitching it, you know, still hand stitching it around, but it is gonna be a little bit further. So from the outside, there's gonna be places where my stitches are maybe even an eighth of an inch deeper than the rest of it. 
that's okay with me, you know? I'm not gonna get stressed out about that. So let me finish uh, stitching this around. I can tell you that uh, doing this with it fused down with that stitch witchery is making a big difference. It's a lot easier to sew, so happy I did that. Okay, so here it is, upside down. Got that done. All right, I am going to see what we have to do next. We've put our band on, we've stitched it down. We have not top stitched it, we've guided it. Okay, so now this is for if you're doing the cowl neck collar, not doing that. So we're gonna skip this whole part and Okay, we're gonna skip all the way down to here. They are gonna have us fuse, and they say interfacing strips. That is what I am using my Trico tape for, okay? They want you to fuse it to the wrong side of your hem, of your sleeves. So over here, where this is the end of one of my sleeves, making sure my seam allowances are gonna stay open. I'm just gonna lay this flat with the fusible size side down and fuse it going straight across, okay? I'm gonna do that for both of my sleeves. Okay, so my microphone is charging, so you're hearing this just off the camera. Um, I've got this fused on. What she wants you to do is either serge the edge or zigzag it. I'm gonna go ahead and just serge it. And then on these pattern pieces, it calls for a one inch hem, okay? So if I surge this edge and my piece of tape here is one inch exactly, then what I'm going to do is just fold it up so it's laying nice and flat, pretend this is surged, and then I believe that we're going to be machine stitching it. Hmm. She doesn't say to do that. This is really weird. Okay, she tells you to surge it. And then she says, turn up and press it, and then unfold it again. So we're gonna kind of hem it, but not really, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is surge it, turn it up, press it, and then open it up again. You know, this is, we are following Nancy. She knows her stuff. Okay, so I got that pressed and opened again, and I want to point out that when I fold it up, it is slightly smaller in the hemmed part than the outside edge. And what that means is when I do finally get around to stitching this, it is going to, you know, shrink it up a little bit if I don't make an adjustment for this part. We will see. I think they're just going to have us sew the sleeve, so we may have a little bit of a elastic look down here. But that is another problem for another day. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and work on the underarm part here. So let me see if I can raise up. I put a new uh, stand over here on my sewing table. It's more sturdy, but it's kind of a bigger hassle to adjust the height. So we're just going to see how it goes from here. Okay, so I have it my front, my back. What I'm going to be doing is pinning together this whole bottom part here. And when I finally get it pinned together, because this stuff wants to move like crazy, I'm going to be stitching it at 5 8 7 inch and um, then pressing this bottom seam allowance open too. If we need to, make some little cuts here in the underarm, maybe about a quarter inch deep or so, just so it can flex more. And I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, today is, what is today? Saturday. And usually I like to have, this is my, my schedule. If I start sewing on Friday so that I can wrap it up by Tuesday night so I can do my um, reveal photo Tuesday or Wednesday. Wednesday, get all my editing done, which gives me Thursday to do the upload. Takes a while. And then doing the thumbnail, doing the, you know, little stuff that goes along with that so that it's ready to go Friday morning. 
Well, um, my daughter is on her way here. I just checked her location. She's about an hour or so away. And for the next three days, while she's in town, because she lives in Chicago, we are going to be working on wedding dress stuff. So what I don't get done here in the next hour, I'm going to have to put off. And so hopefully when I, when I'll be able to get everything done on my time schedule, but you know, this is life. This is just me in my house. And I do have, you know, the sewing machine business and other things going on at the same time, but it's all good. Just letting you know, life gets busy sometimes. So if I don't answer uh, comments and everything quickly, sorry about that. Just doing the best we can over here. Okay, let me go get this sewed, pressed open, and I will be right back. Okay, so now that that is done, pressed open, what it says is now turn it and you're gonna hem it. And it says to use a wobble stitch, a straight or a straight stitch. Uh, a wobble stitch is when you have your um, stitch length, you know, as you normally would, but you have, and you have a zigzag setting on your machine and you have it just barely going back and forth, like at a, a one millimeter or less type thing. So you just have a little bit of give, but with your normal stitch length, you know. It says she wants you to stitch it directly below the finished edge. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come in here right below along the needle line of my serging and do that. And um, someone asked me, I'm trying to answer my comment questions here. Uh, when for my serger, I just use one needle and I use the needle that is closest to the blade and The reason is because I want a small serged edge and by doing that in general You're going to end up with a serging that's about an eighth of an inch deep If you use the needle that's farther from the blade You're going to end up with serging that's about a quarter inch deep and you know this just works better for me So I'm just going to use my straight stitch because I am using my somewhat stretchable um uh, I almost said yarn thread over there on Rosie. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that right around on both of my cuffs. Okay, so with all of that done, here's my little hemmed cuffs. You know, that worked out fine. Um, I'm about to make an executive decision, which is I'm going to omit the pockets. And I know that's going to totally freak some people out. But here's a couple things. First of all, um, I just don't want pockets on this. This stuff, it's such a pain to get it lined up because you have a nap. And when you put nap to nap, it wants to shift a little bit. Getting everything lined up perfectly is a little bit difficult on this, okay? Plus, I don't know that I want the bulk of pockets. And they're pretty good sized pockets. You can see these things. They're very long. This point is way up here, right at your rib cage, and they come all the way down. So it's a very long pocket if you love pockets, you know, and I do normally. Plus it's gonna add a lot of time. So the combination of adding bulk, trouble getting things aligned because of, you know, velvet and everything like that, I'm gonna skip the pockets and we're just gonna sew the skirt together, the front and back at the side seams without the pockets. I think that that's gonna be a lot better for this fabric and for me right now. So I'm uh, gonna pull my pattern off. On the pattern, there's two dots right here. Those are for pocket placement. And if you really wanna put pockets in yours, I have a lot of other videos that show putting inseam pockets in. Please take a peek. Um, but what I'm gonna do right now is try to carefully match up the side seams, remember this skirt piece, the front and back are exactly the same, okay? So I'm gonna match it up and sew this side seam at 5 8 of an inch and then press it open. Okay, so with that done, now it's time to match up the bodice to the skirt. So I'm just folding this in half to find the center front and center back point Gonna stick a pin on each one of these little folds. Let's see, one on the front, one on the back, and I'm gonna do the same thing with my bodice. 
which is right here. My goodness, I have pattern papers everywhere. Okay, so, because the side seams have seams, obviously, and if I carefully fold my incredibly stretchy and drapey fabric, I might find the exact center point. Honestly, it would have been easier if I had marked this earlier when I still had the pattern piece on, but that's okay. All right, so here's one. I'll mark the other one, and then we're going to pin the skirt to the bodice with the right sides together. So this is my bodice here. I'm putting my other center point on. My skirt I have inside out, and I'm going to put that over the top after I get a few key points pinned together. So let me just pin this together here. I'm going to dip it in twice just to try to hold it a little more steady. I'm going to get this one matched up. Dip it in twice. Pull it apart and that will make it easier to match up my side seams and I'll put a few pins between them. Are we stitching at 5 8 7 inch? Mm, no, we are not. We are doing it at 7 8 7 inch. So almost an inch seam allowance. And I was going to tell you, if you don't have a mark on your machine for 7 8 7 inch, just get a piece of tape and put that on there and it'll be fine. Then you can just pull it off when you're done. Okay, while I was over at the sewing machine, let me show you what I did. Just because my fabric is so finicky. After I put in my 7 8 inch seam, along the edge at, you know, about an eighth of an inch in or however it was so that I'm just barely getting through there, I did another row of stitching, okay? And at the center back point right here, I left a little opening because this is the area that I'm gonna be sliding my elastic into in here, okay? But I just did that because my fabric is such a pain. Now, in the instructions, they don't tell you to do that yet. What they tell you to do is once you have that 7 8 inch stitch put in, try saying that fast. I'm just turning my whole little tunic inside out here. Okay. What they say to do is at this point, push the entire seam allowance up towards the top and put a row of stitching in. I just did it that way so that it wouldn't have one more t chance to screw up on me basically. So since it's already in, that's gonna make my life easier. I'm pushing this whole seam allowance up towards the top and I'm gonna run another row of stitching over the top of this line here, okay? I know it looks bumpy. It's just because of the thickness of everything. It's it is what it is, okay? And at the center back where I have the opening left um, from my previous round trip here, I'm gonna also leave that same opening when I'm stitching it on. So I'm gonna like start here and go all the way around end here, but I need to leave this open so I can get my elastic in there. Okay, so at this point I'm over here at Rosie and I just am trying to make sure I have the skirt down here, the bodice up here, and I need to make sure that as I'm sewing, only what I want is underneath the needle, okay? So I'm just doing one little section at a time, and then get things resituated, you know? Feel underneath, make sure all that is good, and then come back up the top. Ooh, and that got a little off. Okay, so this um, stitching line is going to be visible from the front, but um, it's going to be pretty straight. Plus, that's an elastic casing, so it's all going to be cinched in. So I think that's going to be just fine. I'm not worrying about it. But just take your time. Make sure you're only sewing over what you're actually supposed to be. And if your fabric is acting up like mine is, use a little awl to get it oriented back underneath that presser foot like you need it to. Okay, so back at my table, from the outside, this is what my casing looks like, okay? On the inside, 
not as pretty, but still functional. So here's my opening right here. That's where I'm going to feed everything through. And the layers I'm going to be putting my elastic through is the right sides, where I have right sides together, that part, not the wrong sides. If I do the right sides, it'll be smooth the way around. This way, I'm going to run into seam allowances on the corners. We just don't want to deal with that. Um, I should have a little pattern piece that is an elastic guide. And I don't know if it fell on the floor or what, but I am not seeing it. So, not going to panic. What I'm going to do is just cut a piece of elastic that is the size of my waist. Okay? So, if I put it all the way to here, that's the size of my waist. And once it, this is a half inch elastic, okay? so that when I join it together, I will be overlapping it since it's so thin. Um, on her instructions, she are actually so shows to do the method where you put a little piece of fabric over it, which is fine, and I usually use that when I'm using the thicker elastic, but I think this is gonna be okay. All right, so I'm just gonna use my bodkin here, and Find that spot. Where did you go? Here it is. Okay, and then just start feeding my elastic all the way through. Um, I am going to get a little straight pin and pin the tail end of the elastic here to the skirt so that it doesn't want to disappear on me. There you go. All right, so let me go ahead and get this fed all the way through. Now this casing is pretty tight, so I'm getting towards the end. There's a little eyelet at the end of my bodkin. You can kind of see the shape there. I'm going to stick a straight pin through that while I have it all bunched, and that's going to hold that bodkin in place so that then I can pull all of this elastic down, you know, just to try to get it almost to the end. Once I have both ends poking out, well, then I can get it situated, but it's always these types of places. And um, sometimes I have people say, well, why don't you just use a, bod or a safety pin? And to me, a bodkin is kind of like a safety pin on steroids. You know, it's longer and stronger and all of that. So that's why I use it. But you know, you do you. If you enjoy using a safety pin, by all means, go for it. I like these little guys. Okay, now I am going to just do some stretching and everything and try to make sure that my elastic has not gotten twisted anywhere before I actually connect the two ends together. Okay, so at this point, it doesn't look like it's twisted anywhere, so I'm going to go ahead and just get a little needle and thread here and a thimble and go ahead and just make some hand stitches to get my elastic. Oh, look at that, my thread was too short, I pulled it off. But I'm just gonna use some hand stitches to get my elastic uh, layered up and sewn together. And then uh, I'll be able to pop it back into the casing. And then once it's popped in, I will use a different thread because this one is quickly running out and uh, hand stitch that little opening in the casing closed. Okay, actually I took it over to my sewing machine and just stitched that little opening on the machine so it would match everything else. And at this point, <coughs> excuse me, at this point, all we need to do is hem it. And since uh, previously she used the method where you put the trico tape along the edge and then turn it up, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. Before I do anything, I'm going to fuse it with my trico tape, serge the edge, and then press it up. And then I'm going to stitch right here on my machine, right next to where my serging is. Okay? So you've seen all those steps before. I'm going to go ahead and get that done.
everybody. So I am working on editing this video. And um, as you can see, Morgan arrived and she was able to model it for me because, you know, that's a lot more fun than me. And I think that, you know, the top turned out cute. It was a cute little stretch top, you know, way to go sewing with Nancy, Nancy Zena. Love that. Um, I did want to mention one thing, though, um, and I mentioned it on my Facebook group earlier this week. I am going to be, instead of putting out a video every Friday, it's becoming a bit overwhelming because I've had a lot of things going on in my life with travel and wedding and another business and farm and everything. Sewing a complete garment every week, it's just becoming it's becoming hard and I'm having to do projects that are more fast just for the sake of I can get them done faster than this is something I really am passionate about. So at this point, what I'm thinking is I'm going to be spacing them out and just doing the first and third Friday of the month. That's my goal right now. So we just look forward to that. And I might actually, I've been, you know, sticking primarily with the big four pattern companies, but I, you know, I might just veer off and do other things that kind of interest me from other designers. I personally, I am a folkwear pattern junkie, um, and I don't think I've done any folkwear patterns on this channel, but I might do some of those, you know, things like that. So anyhow, just giving you a quick update. I hope you like this video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>